Okay, final lesson in factoring. All right, so now we are going to kind of put it all together. We're going to put together when we have four pieces, when we have three pieces, when we're taking out a, a greatest common factor, we're doing all that kind of stuff and seeing it all put together. Okay, so we do have a new vocabulary term that we need to introduce because this is actually something pretty cool that happens. We saw this when we were multiplying. Um, we have something that's called a difference of squares. Okay, specifically a difference of squares is you have a binomial, so two terms, right? Where two perfect squares, right? Two perfect square terms are being subtracted. So difference means subtract, right? Okay, so it is a binomial, has to be two terms only, and both terms have to be perfect squares, okay? And they are being subtracted. All right, so I've got a couple of examples for you. Okay, first one, x squared, minus nine. Okay, so you may not think about x squared being a perfect square, right? But what is a perfect square? A perfect square is something times itself. Right? So anything where you're multiplying something times itself, that is considered a perfect square. So 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, and x times x is x squared. Those are two matching pieces, right? So that is considered a perfect square. So x squared minus 9, you are subtracting. You have two perfect square terms. Okay? It can be written backwards. That's still a difference of squares. It's still being subtracted. Those are still perfect square terms terms. Okay, and last one, they both could have numbers with the variable, right? So 25x squared minus 49, right? Those are both perfect squares. 25 is a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square. 49 is a perfect square. It works. Okay, so the pattern that goes with this Okay, very, very easy pattern. It is x, oh, wait, sorry, it's not supposed to be x, it's supposed to be a. Ah, okay, so a plus b and a minus b. Okay, so what that means is that whatever your first piece is, so in this case, like x squared minus 9, right, your first piece is a, your second piece is b. Okay, the way this works x squared minus 9 is x times x, because that gives you x squared, right? And what gives you 9? We already said 3 and 3. You have to have 1 plus and 1 minus. And it's just a shortcut pattern that only works when you have a difference of squares. Because if you multiply this, we saw this when we were multiplying, um, the middle two terms is going to be a zero pair, and it's going to cancel. So what you're left with is just x squared minus 9. All right, so the next one, 16, x, 16 minus x squared, okay, works the same way. Your first term is 16. 16 breaks down to 4 times 4, right? B being your second term is x squared. That breaks down to x and x. So you have 1 plus and 1 minus. And if you use your area model and multiply that out, this is exactly what you will get is 16 minus x squared because your two middle terms will be a zero pair. All right, last one. Okay. What multiplies to give you the 25? That's your first term, perfect square. Should be 5x and 5x, right? 5 and 5 for 25, x and x for x squared. And then what multiplies to give you the 49 would be 7 and 7, so 1 plus and 1 minus. Okay, so these are perfect squares, and these are what's called a difference of squares. Now, this only works when there's only two pieces, okay? So keep that in mind, and we are going to fill in the flow chart that you're given in your notes. Okay. So specific steps that we have to follow when we are factoring to make sure that we have gotten all the possible pieces and then it's broken down to its simplest form. 
Okay. So step one, we need to know if there is a GCF on all the pieces. Is there a greatest common factor that it can come out of every piece, every term in our area? Okay. If there's not, then you just go to step two. If there is a GCF, you have to divide it out of all of your terms, right? You cannot leave it there. It's going to mess up everything else that you, that you, you know, you would be able to do. Um, now remember that your GCF can be a variable. It can be just a coefficient. It can be a combination of both. Okay, if it's one, you don't need to worry about it. But if it's anything else, any number, any variable, you got to divide it out of all your terms first. Okay, once you've done that, then you get to go to step two. If there is no GCF, then you just go directly to step two. Okay, step two, very easy. We need to know how many terms it has. Okay, because we've learned how to deal with three different possibilities, right? How many terms does this original problem have? Well, if it has two, that's what we were just talking about. You need to check and see if it's a difference of squares. If it's a difference of squares, um, then you do exactly what we talked about before. You find the pattern and go ahead and write it down. And that's it. That's all you can do with a difference of squares, right? Is, is use that pattern and write it out and you're finished, okay? If it has three pieces, that was from the last lesson, and that's the one where you need to find your product and sum, right? And you use your area model box to find your length and your width, okay? If it has four terms, which is your last possibility, you do the same, the, the, you do what we did with the first factoring lesson, you basically just use the box. It's already got four terms, put it in your area model and go from there. Okay, and a quick reminder, if you have a difference of squares, basically what you're doing is you're taking the square root, right, of the first and the last term, and you're using your pattern. If you want to write your pattern down again, it's A plus B and A minus B. And you're going to use this pattern later when you take higher level maths, and there's actually more patterns that go with this. It's pretty cool. All right, so put it all together. We're actually going to go through these steps every time we factor. Okay, so start with example one. First question, does it have a GCF? Is there something that will divide into both pieces? In this case, there's only two. Into both pieces evenly, right? So three and 48, yeah, your GCF is three because three can divide into both of those pieces. So go ahead and divide it out, right? Three, you divide that out, you get X squared minus 16, okay? Please remember that the object of factoring, right, is to figure out what we multiplied to get an area. So we have to include all these pieces when we write our finished answer, otherwise our answer is not complete, right? We, we've left something out and we wouldn't be able to get back to our original area. And that's a good way to check to see if you've gotten everything there. Multiply it back out if you need to. See that you're not missing anything. Okay, so we've done the GCF. How many terms does it have? Right, it has two terms, right? That's the original piece. So once we've taken out the GCF, check those two pieces. Are those both perfect squares? Okay, so yes, it is per both perfect squares, which means you have a difference of squares. All right, so we're going to use our pattern on that. Now, see, we wouldn't have known that those were perfect squares if we hadn't taken the GCF out first, because 3 and 48 are not perfect squares. So that's why it's very important to check for your GCF first. Okay, so x squared and 16 are both perfect squares. So we're going to write it out and use our model. We know that x squared is x and x and 16 is 4 and 4 and then there should be 1 plus and 1 minus and you're done. The GCF stays in front that you took out and then you have your pattern for your difference of squares and that's completely factored. That is in the simplest possible form. 
Okay, so on to the next one. Okay, so we have 2x squared minus x minus 3. Is there a GCF? Is there something that will divide into all three pieces? No. The only thing that would divide into all the three of those pieces is one, and one does not count because it doesn't change our problem. All right, how many terms or how many pieces does it have? It has three terms. Again, going back to identifying our polynomials, we know it does because they're separated by subtraction signs, so three terms. So that means we have to use product and sum, right, and use our area model once we've got it into four pieces. All right, so what is my product? Remember that product is first times last, so two times negative three, the product is negative six, and the sum is whatever is the coefficient of your middle term, that's negative one. All right, so you need two numbers that multiply to give you negative six as your product and add to give you negative one. So again, if you have to, go through, list all your possibilities that multiply to give you negative six and then figure out which pair actually adds up to give you negative one. Make sure you're watching your signs. What should work is negative 3x and positive 2x, okay? And once you've got it, right, there's your four pieces, you go straight to the box. What is the GCF? That's what we start with. Between 2x squared and negative 3x should just be x. That's all they have in common, okay? You have your width. The length that goes with that should be 2x and minus 3. Okay, and then the other piece of the width that will work with this length has to be just one. So finished answer, oop, length first. So finished answer should be x plus one and two x minus three, length and width. All right, so let's try a couple more, make sure you're good. Six x squared minus 21 x minus 12. Okay, so by the flow chart, we got to check for a GCF first. Is there something that will divide into all three terms? Now notice this one does not have an X. This 12 doesn't have an X. So I know there is not any possibility of a variable being in my GCF, right? I can't take out an X there. There isn't one. So I'm only going to concentrate on my coefficients. So what can divide into 6, 21, and 12? Is there anything that will? Yes, so my GCF is three, all right? So I'm gonna take a three out of everything first before I go even how many pieces I have. So if I divide three out of all the pieces, I should have two X squared, negative seven X, and negative four, right? So three times each of those will go back to my original, so I'm good. I'm still good as far as my original. I have three terms, right? And the three terms that I'm going to look at, I've already divided out by three, so I don't have to go look at my original. I can look at my new one, which is kind of nice because it makes my product and sum that much smaller, right? So three terms, product and sum. Okay, so the product is not six times negative 12. Again, because you've already divided out three, your product is actually negative eight. Again, it's nice, makes the product and the sum that much smaller to deal with. And your sum is negative seven. So our possibilities that multiply to give us negative eight. Okay, those are all our possibilities. The only pair that actually works to give me a sum of negative seven is there. Okay, so I'm gonna use my box now, right? And if you need to, you can rewrite the problem just so you, you know, are following the steps as far as now I have it to four pieces because I'm splitting, remember, we're splitting our middle term into these two pieces. All right, so 2x squared, negative 8x, positive x, negative 4. GCF on the first two pieces to start with. 
2x squared and negative 8x, they have a 2 in common, and they also have an x in common. So you have your width. Go back and find your length. That should be x, and that should be a minus 4 to get a negative 8x for my area. Okay, go back, find the other piece to your width that you need to get x minus 4 should just be a 1. So finished answer, include the GCF you took out. There's your width, and there is your length. Okay. All right, so next one. Does it have a GCF? Okay, well, there's no x on the last piece, so no variable. Is there anything that will divide into 3, 15, 1, and 5? All right, because we're looking at just the coefficients. So, no, 1 does not count. All right, so how many terms? It has four terms. Well, again, good news. If it has four terms, you can put it straight into your area model and go from there. Okay, so take the GCF out of the first two pieces. 3x squared and negative 15x. Um, I know I can divide both of them by 3, and they both have an x. All right, so go back. What is going to be your length for this? x and negative 5. And what does my other piece of my width need to be? Just a 1. So finished answer on this one, 3x plus 1 and x minus 5. Okay, you can go ahead and start your assignment on this. Practice, make sure you're showing all your steps.